It has been a while since I've done a Watch Dogs Legion video and that is largely because Ubisoft has been super quiet since the delay announcement in October 2019. In a different world the game would have launched 3 months ago and we likely had one of the season pass drops already. But in this reality they take the extra time and actually want to deliver a bigger game now at launch that should be way more appealing. In this video I want to refresh your memory and talk about everything we know about Watch Dogs Legion so far, the recent news, release date indications and when we can finally see some new gameplay for this game. Although that final question is not that hard to answer. So let's get into it, a like on the video would be super appreciated. And let's go. I like to do giveaways here on the channel and I actually have a separate Watch Dogs Legion giveaway running alongside my June giveaway for a 2020 game of your choice. So you can participate in both and both can give you the chance to win Watch Dogs Legion. Just click the link in the pinned comment for a chance to win. You have to be a subscriber as well when you participate and good luck. And yes, yeah, not March 2020, but somewhere else this year is when this game is now planned. And it makes sense that they give the developers more time because it sounds and looks very ambitious. Every character we see walk on the street is playable and those characters will also have their own voice and behave different in the many cutscenes this game should have. I was told at E3 2019 that there should be 60 plus missions across the five different storylines that all have a different topic. Deep State was already highlighted in the menu, this is about the futuristic London, how that's deeply connected and now the nation is spying on citizens of the city, something that has been brought to your attention by a whistleblower that you now have to meet for this mission. Another storyline will be about the private military who is taking control of the streets of London as we saw multiple times in the trailers. One storyline will be about the crime family clan Kelly and how they came to power and what bad stuff they're doing right now. And they seem to be in charge of the bare knuckle arenas and I really hope that this is also like a sort of wave based combat encounter, like a fun activity that we can return to and overall the melee in this game should be improved with dodges and just more combat moves. Other storylines will be about AI focusing on Bloom because as you likely know they are back in this game although not the main villain but they will play a role. And the fifth storyline is about the old dead sack that was in London before the game but disappeared and we will likely find out what happened there. But yeah, again, this info is all based on E3 2019 and Gamescom that followed soon after. It's likely still true, but I expect the game to be even bigger when we see it again. Because during the recent Ubisoft financial call in May of this year, we namely learned that we should expect more value for the games that were delayed. So for Gods and Monsters, Rainbow Six Quarantine, but also for Watch Dogs Legion. They showed the map briefly in a stream they did last year, but maybe this map will now be bigger thanks to the delay. Or maybe they add extra ways to traverse the map, because we see footage here that was posted by IFCFan99 on Reddit, where we see that we weren't able to explore the underground of London yet. Like the character wasn't able to move past the bars. So we know that the underground stations are fast travel points, but it would be cool if we could actually like take the metro too, right? Maybe that's something they now included, it's of course just speculation, but you would think that with the almost a year extra development time, they would add some things to make the world feel more alive. And okay, maybe it's not one year extra development time, that of course depends on the new release date and we already got a good idea when that might be, but I will touch on that a little later in the video. When they revealed the game, we also saw the season pass that looked pretty bare bones with just four new characters and some missions. And sure, the second one on the left here might be Aiden Pierce from the first Watch Dogs game. Right, like he has his hands in his coat, it looks very similar. Having the mask from Ranch will be cool. You will of course wear masks in this game when entering restricted areas, so nobody sees your face. But normally a season pass for a Ubisoft game includes new areas, abilities, like compare this to the Assassin's Creed Odyssey season pass. and. I would argue that the whole legacy of the first blade is likely bigger than a few missions with some new characters. And that's how it works if you want to recruit a character in this game, you have to do a mission for them. 
First you spot them in the world and then you can add them to your contacts. And here you see their support for that sack via this bar. So you have to push this bar to the right by doing favors for them so the characters like that sack more. And then when they become a supporter you can talk to them and do one specific task and after that they will join your assistance. So this was an alpha build from exactly one year ago so I really hope they improved the facial expressions that we see here in this conversation that happens before you go on the mission to recruit that character. But overall I'm not sure if we should expect the same quality as in other games simply because every character can have this conversation and have a different voice and behave in a specific way. It will be interesting to see the improvements during the July 12th Ubisoft Forward event and this basically Ubisoft's E3 press conference turned into a digital only event and one month later than normal. Watch Dogs Legion is one of the biggest games they have with Assassin's Creed Valhalla so very high chance that both will be there and both will likely launch close to each other as well. Video Game Chronicle understands at least one of the titles, Watch Dogs Legion, is currently aiming to debut alongside the next gen consoles, should there be no significant disruption to production. So when the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X release, likely in mid-November, Watch Dogs Legion will be there too. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will also be a launch game. The difference is though, according to this rumor, that Watch Dogs Legion will not be available beforehand, while Assassin's Creed Valhalla is likely planned for mid-October. So that is pretty big. We also got Jason Schreier from Kotaku confirming that Watch Dogs Legion is still launching at the end of this year if nothing changes as we see in the image from Alien to Remedy on Reddit. And that seems to be the case with Ubisoft stating that all games are still on track but they could delay it if next gen consoles slip to next year. Something that is super unlikely at this point. So yes, Watch Dogs Legion has to stand on its own during the crowded holiday periods with many launch games for the PS5 and Series X. Watch Dogs 2 did not do very well when it released in the holiday of 2016 but it has a huge deal because it still ended up selling 10 million units as Ubisoft recently revealed. So that once again highlights how important Watch Dogs as a franchise is for Ubisoft and I really hope that Watch Dogs Legion can surpass the success of the previous games especially in terms of quality but I think it will need a deeper customization system for that for the operatives and then I'm not talking about the cosmetic items that you can buy at random shops in the city but more in terms of skills and abilities. Going back to Granny because we just destroyed the blackmail material and then you call the character that you just helped and we see Granny actually do one of the many emotes via the emote wheel that will be available and then after that the operative becomes available for you to recruit. And we see that he has 40% grapple damage and minus 10% melee damage resistance. And these stats are actually super important because apart from the look, this should be the reason why you want to recruit these characters in the first place. Here we see a character on the street with 40% extra melee damage. So it would be nice to recruit this person for the bare knuckle activity you would think, right? Or this other guy, Dusty who has the 25% automatic release from jail because that is the thing you can choose to surrender to the police when they got you and then you will be thrown in jail for a period of time and then you do not have access to that character for the time being. Do you choose to continue to fight though in those situations then you can fight back or try to escape but then the character might die and then you lose them for good thanks to permadeath that is of course present. Here we see people protesting and actually under the stats you see their current schedule and yeah indeed they are protesting right now. This person has 40% SMG damage but minus 15% max ammo, still very very strong and this might be a great enforcer. Because I think it will be smart to look at the stats and then base the class on that. After namely recruiting a character you have to pick one of three classes. And the enforcer is that gun blazing class that can also use heavy weapons and can throw a sticky mine that stuns enemies as a ability. And every class has one active ability for the infiltrator it's the cloak that turns you invisible for nearby enemies by hacking their implants that every character in this world has. Has. And the hacker has spider drones that can help you like automatically or you can control them yourself.
yourself as well to infiltrate areas. Then every five levels you can select a new perk for your operatives. Level 15 is the max, so you have three perks per character. And think of the perks as special bonuses, like tagging all nearby hostiles when using your cloak or deploy an extra spider bot as the hacker. So then you have two with you instead of one. Sounds pretty big, but will it be deep enough? They talked about having 12 of these perks at the launch of the game. Maybe that is now more thanks to the extra time. And I hope so because I totally think that at one point we will figure out the best perks and then we will all be rocking that loadout and we just have one ability for each class. So hopefully they expand on the classes and give us way more ways to customize them, maybe with skill trees or anything. There will be one big skill tree that applies to all characters, but I don't think that will have like a huge impact on each individual class. So hopefully they are able to expand on it a little bit. Overall, I really can't wait to see the game again and we will likely see next-gen footage for the game now too. And that will likely look a little bit like this. I've showed you this RTX footage in previous videos already. But it makes sense that they want to focus on the Series X and PS5 version now. Something that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is of course doing with all their promotion as well. So we should already expect a big graphical leap when we see the game again. But I'm especially interested in the big changes. The improvements to the ambitious play as anyone system. And fingers crossed for more customization options. When we know more, I will of course let you know here. So totally subscribe to miss nothing regarding Watch Dogs Legion. If you haven't already, a like on the video would be super nice. And check out my recent video on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And how next gen will improve that version of the game. And I think that those things I mentioned there will apply to Watch Dogs Legion as well. For now, I will speak to you next time. Stay safe and goodbye.